Joining me on the show is the man who never pulls his punches when discussing politically charged issues, a stand which has brought him head to head with the Kerala government. Arif Muhammad Khan, governor of Kerala, is joining me live. Sir, thank you so much for your time. Arif Saab, Kerala Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan has lashed out at the BJP-led government at the centre over the triple talaq law. He has questioned why the practice of instant divorce among Muslims was criminalized when divorces happen in all religion. What will be your first reaction on this? You know, divorce, there is no doubt that divorce is part of every modern law. Even in Christian countries where the religion forbids divorce, now divorce is part of these statutes and divorce definitely comes under the civil laws and in civil laws you cannot forbid any action on the pain of punishment. Hmm. So as far as the principle is concerned there is no problem. The problem is that these views are being expressed out of sheer ignorance of the Muslim jurisprudence. Divorce is one thing and triple divorce is totally, totally different from divorce as a civil subject. First thing is that there is no mention, where is the question of saying, I mean there is no sanction hmm. and it is not only that it is not sanctioned, there is not even mention of triple divorce as far as the scripture that is Quran is concerned. Triple divorce, even Muslim personal law board in their affidavit have admitted it is wrongful, it is innovative, it is, it is derogatory to the dignity of women and they in 2017 the affidavit which they submitted before the Honorable Supreme Court, they said that they themselves will start a campaign against this wrongful and innovative method of divorce. But what these people do not realize is that right from the day one, it was during the period of second caliph, Hazrat Umar, Ji. when triple divorce was accepted as legally permissible. Hmm. But the, in the first case itself, the man who had pronounced three instant divorces, which means immediate separation, he was subjected to corporeal physical punishment. So one thing is clear, divorce is a civil subject, hmm. but triple divorce was considered as a criminal offense and for it, you know, you can compare it like this, that two persons are having a dispute over some property. Now this is a dispute of civil nature, but if one person takes law in his own hands and physically injures the other party, then that is that will not be considered as a, as part of the civil dispute right it will be taken treated differently okay it will be treated differently and criminal proceedings will will have to start against that person okay. therefore hazrat umar he subjected this man who admitted on the comp when complaint went reached him and when this person was summoned and he admitted, so he said that you have made this whole provision of the Quran something of play. Therefore, he, he said, now you can't go back to this woman, but you will be subjected to 40 lashes. Today, if you give that punishment to anybody, hmm. it will be difficult for him to survive. That's so right. the law which the government of India has made, in fact, is more humane. Okay, you are saying that it is humane. Um, you know, do you see a larger vote bank factor at play here with next general elections a year away? Because Vijayan's opposition to the triple talaq ban follows similar criticism 
that had come from other opposition parties. Uh, you know, Congress at that time had also urged that the bill be referred to the Parliamentary Standing Committee as well for further discussions. I think, uh, I feel it is more than that. It is not merely, uh, you know, because you will have to take everything into consideration. The left parties, historically speaking, say in 1986, when I took the stand hmm. against triple divorce, who supported me with vociferously supported me? It was the left parties and BJP. <clears throat> in fact, Mr. E.M.S. Nambudri Park, I was, when you told me <laughs> about this statement, I thought that Mr. Late Mr. E.M.S. Nambudri Path must be turning in his grave because he was not only against triple divorce and he extended full support to me. Uh, he came out, he came out so strongly in, in support in favor of my stand. Hmm. But not only that they supported my stand against the triple divorce, the left parties, historically speaking, have been pleading for uniform civil court. They they have all they are the votaries for uniform civil court. But now it seems that they have uh, they they are possibly uh, revisiting their stand. They are reviewing their earlier whatever they have said earlier, which is on record. But this is not merely. I won't look at it from this angle. Because I heard somebody who was speaking before me that to attract the votes of some community, no, the game is larger than that. So what Kerala, is this larger game? You have, you have, larger game is that in Kerala, governments are formed by the fronts, not any particular political party. Every front has more than 10, 12 parties. Now, Kerala papers are reporting it for last few months that some overtures are being made, some realignment of forces is going to happen. Hmm. Now, there, there is a party in the opposite front who have deferred with the left parties on the question of the personal law. So maybe these statements are main, being made to assure the uh, uh, people of that political persuasion uh, that uh, you forget about uh, our earlier stand which was considered a very 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 progressive stand now as far as the question of personal law is concerned we are not only ready to stand with you but we are even ready to attack something which happened three years back the, the, this yes. this law was made in 2019. This is That's not right. an issue today. Hmm. If this is being made an issue today, it is only to give assurance to to a particular political outfit that on the question of the Muslim Personal Law Board, because there is a lot of discussion about the Uniform Civil Court also. Hmm. So sort of assurance is being given that if you agree for the realignment of the forces, then you be sure that you will not be embraced and we will stand with you to oppose the uniform civil court. We will stand for, with you okay. to, uh, for, to, uh, to uphold the religious personal laws. Okay. I think that is the game. So it is not merely a, to there is debate. Some also raging over the, the talks that have happened between Jamaat Islami Hind and RSS. CPM, in fact, has strongly criticized hmm. Jamaat Islami for the same. How do you view it? Maybe they have because 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 they have adopted a yardstick, according which they have repeatedly said. I'm not making any allegation against them. They are saying that anybody who is opposed to the central government or to the BJP is secular in their opinion. And so, uh, so if you put it in reverse terms, hmm. then anybody who even tries to talk to them 
uh, will become person persona non grata for them. I am not making any. I am not making any allegation. I am just since you have you are asking me this question. This is how I look at it. Okay. Because since these are the. I am basing my assessment hmm. on the statements which have already been published many times in Kerala papers. Since you are talking about political realignment and the statement has drawn a lot of attention, Arif Saab, Kerala Chief Minister has also reiterated that the Citizenship Amendment Bill is anti-minority. Uh, his question was, how can we decide citizenship based on religion? It should be based on where we are born. You know, when we look at that realignment argument yeah, that you're yeah. trying to give, all these issues which are seen as divisive and polarizing being raised by CPM and the chief minister himself. In fact, I hold the view that if anything is bad or injurious for any section of the Indian population is bad and injurious for the whole of India. The, it is important to see the kind of terminology which they are using. The, this, terminology, this terminology and idiom is, historically speaking, it is always used by those who want to create fear in the mind of a section of the population. Hmm. So that they feel hounded, they feel insecure, they feel unsettled, disoriented. And in that, when you place them in that state of mind, hmm. then you reach out to them and project yourself as champions of their interest. There is nothing new about it. Before 1947, this was the terminology, this was the idiom, this was the strategy of Muslim League. Now there are people who feel that if Muslim League could use it successfully before 47 to achieve their agenda, why people today cannot use the same terminology and idiom, hmm. same strategy to frighten people, to hurt them, to feel insecure. And these insecure people, it will be much easier to manu manipulate them. It will be much easier to, to get their sympathies if you reach on the scene and pose yourself as champion of their interests and as their protectors. But Arif Saab, the know, fact uh, is also... You can see it in the, in the film. Hmm. The fact is Sorry? also uh, that Muslim women have spoken out against triple talaq. The triple talaq debate with identity politics, uh, gender equality is part of a larger national debate over the Uniform Civil Code or the UCC. What is your perspective on the demands that diverse personal laws should be replaced with UCC? You have spoken in the past. I want you to throw some light on it again. Applicable, it should be applicable to all Indians, irrespective of religion, gender or caste. Would it be the first step to create a just, equal and egalitarian society? Your question, I will deal in three parts. First, the Muslim women themselves have spoken against the uh, triple divorce. Uh, in fact, it was the Muslim women who went to the Supreme Court. Judgment was given on their petition, and then uh, when uh, when uh, uh, this uh, this bill was passed in the Lok Sabha, the the then opposition, I am not naming any party, did not allow it to become law because it could not be passed in Rajya Sabha. It took more than two years for it to become a law when the government could manage the majority in the. Uh, Rajya Sabha. That was in 2019 when it became law. Judgment had come in 2017. So, but the proof of the pudding is in eating. Hmm. What has happened during, since 2019 when this law was made? Hmm. The rate of divorce in the Muslim community has gone down by more than 90%. 
if i remember correctly it is 95 or 96 percent that's right lowering of the divorce rate how many families have been saved how many muslim women have been saved from this indi indignity how many children's future has been protected but the hunger for power is such a such a strong strong i would say sentiment hmm. that you ignore all these things and that is why i am saying that this kind of statements are not simply they do not target some section of the voters basically this is uh, if the reports which have appeared in the kerala press uh, speculating about the realignment of political forces something is happening there i see this as part of that process where major major realignment is going to happen and in order to assure the people of that particular political persuasion that we will stand with you for upholding and saving the religion based personal laws now the question of uniform civil code hmm. everybody who holds an elected office or constitutional office takes an oath of the constitution even a person who fights the election is made to take oath now it is it is a constitutional obligation for the government of india for the whole of india to have a uniform civil code but lot of disinformation is being spread that if uniform civil code comes then everybody will be forced to adopt same uh, customs same rituals same practices um, the those who, who are in lesser numbers they will not be allowed to bury their bury their uh, uh, dead and everybody similar kind of practices will be forced there cannot be a greater untruth than this disinformation okay. already hmm. hindu code bill is applicable not only to the hindus but to the sikhs jains and buddhists are all the has that law been able to cement all the differences in practices and rituals and the and the so way the marriages are solemnized hmm. no that is not the that is not the purpose of the law the purpose of the law purpose of the uniform civil code is uniformity of justice not uniformity of practices hmm. uniform how you solemnize your marriage it is for you to decide whether you go you go around the fire you don't go around the fire you go to gurdwara you go to sub sub buddhist priest performs that function some muslim priest perform that everybody is free for instance in muslim law hmm. a husband is obliged to pay meher which normally they do not pay That's to right. the wife before the consummation of marriage ha ah. do you think ucc is going to to uh, forbid the payment of this meher certainly not what ucc will seek to achieve is uniformity of justice okay. you you solemnize your marriage hmm. in a manner which is which you like or in which you believe hmm. but if a dispute arises and matter goes to the court then court will the justice will be done to all women they may belong to any community but it will be uniformity of justice okay. whether it is man or woman arif saab i'm going UCC to shift focus now ucc only aims at uniformity of justice uniformity yes. of justice from ucc i'm going to shift focus now to the two issues that are that are being debated across india one is the bbc documentary dr s jay shankar external affairs yeah. minister has said that bbc documentary is not accidental and he has called it politics by another means as he denounced the narrative in the foreign media about prime minister narendra modi's government can this external negative trend you know negative trend which is very evident you know why does it happen before the election year and it's nothing new to this government because we have also seen it during indira gandhi tenure when she spoke about some foreign hand yeah yes 
I totally agree with what our Foreign Minister Shri Jay Shankar has said. But if for your, you know, basically, what 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 the documentary is trying to say? Documentary is trying to say that you believe a report which was prepared by some British officers and ignore the verdict of the highest court of India. That is the Supreme Court. This is what they are telling us through this documentary. But there is nothing new about it. You know, George Bernard Shaw has beautifully, beautifully uh, described this mindset. He said that there is nothing so bad or so good that you will not find an Englishman doing it. But you will never find an Englishman in the wrong. He does everything on principle. He fights you on patriotic principles. Hmm. He robs you on business principles. He enslaves you on imperial principles. And if I may add, he slanders you, he character assassinates you on the principle of journalism. There is nothing new about it. Have they ever made any documentary on how, uh, on the Jallianwala Bagh? Have they made any documentary how the craftsmen, the weavers of Bengal, their, their thumbs were cut, physically cut? Have they made any documentary of the famine of 1943 when all the wheat was taken to England? And despite the request of the British officials in Calcutta themselves, who requested the then Prime Minister Churchill, that at least send some rice to India. People are dying on the roads. And Churchill wrote on the file, they breed like rabbits. Let them die. And on another file he wrote, why Gandhi has not died so far. Therefore, a documentary produced with that mindset, I do not think we need to have okay. long discussion about okay. it. It should be treated with the contempt okay. which you are treating it, it with contempt. For us, there is another statement Supreme that has Court, been made by billionaire us, businessman George Soros. So, in which George Soros, sorry? George Soros businessman uh, has talked about yeah. democratic revival in India because the Adani trouble will weaken the Modi government. And he is same Mr. George Soros who in 2020 had pledged 1 billion US dollars to fight rising nationalism and, and had particularly singled out Prime Minister Modi. You know, Arif Saab, have we ever seen uh, Indian okay. businessmen it, yeah. speak so openly against governments in other countries? Or, you know, Prime Ministers of other countries? No, 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 no. No, no. Where is the question? Where is the question? India, the India, India is one of the most ancient civilizations. We never had colonies anywhere, even when we were at the zenith of our, our glory. So why, why? We do not have that mindset. But Mr. George Soros, he has that mindset. They want the world, they feel that it is their right to dictate to the people all over the world how they should conduct their affairs. They are not ready to... Ex they, they suffer from that white supreme, supremacist mindset. And therefore, they try to poke their nose uh, into the affairs of the others. And as I said earlier, now the world is recognizing our potential. People recognize and acknowledge that India is a great, ancient, continuing civilization. And even in countries of Europe, the, 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 the performance of the Indians in every field of activity is yielding great results, is influencing everybody, impacting everybody. Hmm. Therefore, you know, always remember, Unfair criticism is a blessing in disguise. Nobody kicks a dead dog. This criticism only shows that India is a country where things are happening. 
All right, Arif Mohammad Khan, always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for a candid interview. You took all questions. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for your time, sir.